been awesome, man. It's been a pleasure watching you uh, start off a few years ago, and yeah, it's just been crazy. The, uh, the, the rise and the notoriety, and uh, you know, I love reading the press, and uh, you know, I got to say, I'm very proud and happy for you. Thanks, uh, man. Every year at Art Basel, to be there as one of your guests and to walk around and see all of your amazing yeah. art, it's uh, truly inspiring and amazing to see somebody just have an idea and a vision, and yeah. and then you're standing in it. Not not mm. only you're standing in it, but you're strangers, yeah. people and friends and critics walking around and they're looking yeah. at your stuff, yeah. looking at your art, and yeah. uh, it's it's. It's it's a it's an amazing feeling and it's uh, it's amazing because the show is just like uh, it's it's there's so many different emotions you're you're, you're excited you're stressed out um, you're stressed out because you want everything to go sure. well you know a lot of people will ask me you know go, going into a show even a month two months and are, are you excited are you and I, the, the excited is actually not a feeling those first two months because just you, you're focused on making it happen and making everything work it's actually more. Uh, the stress, but it's I mean it's good stress because you're sure. making something you love come true. Uh, I'm excited when the show's done because then you know you know went well and you it's know, time to have happy and, and have fun all, and relax. Yeah, fun yeah. and relax and, and you hear all the good comments and and, uh, and and then you're just excited to start the next thing. So yeah, um, yeah, it's been a good ride. I mean it's been fun. Yeah. So I uh, I guess I probably first saw your art about four years ago. Yeah. But but when did you actually start? Like when did you decide that you were going to start creating your pieces? Well, I, I well, art's something I, I've I've always done uh, since I was a kid. Since you know when I was two or three years old, my mom was a stained glass artist, and uh, she used to do ceramics and stained glass. So um, you know I was always at the table, and I used to do you know artwork with her, and 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 I loved it. And it was just sort of like our thing on the weekends when my mom wasn't working and. And then I would do it on my own, and I, I was just always a very creative person, and I loved creating stuff. Um, but then there, you know, the, there was that you know period where you know, you know, th I don't really want to get into it too much, but you know, things weren't going well for me, and then I caught, and I kind of lost my way, and then I, you know, I uh, I left home, and you know, I was staying on friends' couches for a little while, but that you know that gets old really quick, and. You know, you can only stay on people's couches for so long, and then I, I you know, just slowly found myself looking for places to sleep outside, and uh, you know, I did that for about four years. But you know, towards the end of that, you know, I decided I need to change my life. But um, in those four years, I, I wasn't doing artwork anymore. I just, you know, the focus is on where am I going to sleep or what am I going to eat. And, you know, it's just like survival mode, you know. Not that I didn't enjoy all the art, you know, that I was exploring through the city, and uh, I still enjoyed art, but it was just I didn't have time to do my own. Um, but then once, you know, I got off the street and I decided to change my life, you know, art still wasn't a priority. It was like, okay, you just wasted four years of your life. Not that I, I mean, I, lo I learned a lot of good lessons. Right. I learned a lot about myself, but, um, you know, I was more in the, okay, how do I you know, get to this where everybody else is. So I, I literally, 20 years old, I had to uh, finish my high school credits because I left when I was 15. And then uh, I did that, and then I went to university. And then uh, once university was finished, then I went to finance school and I got my stockbroker's license and uh, uh, wealth management and all that sort of stuff because I worked in restaurants and all I see all these brokers come in and I saw all the fancy cars and all the money they're making. And I thought, you know, my brother was in finance, so I thought, Money is what's going to make you happy, you know, yeah. because I saw these guys and I thought that was life. So uh, I worked on a trading floor, uh, just volunteering at first, but then once I got all my licenses, it was 2008 and I wasn't getting a job anymore because the market crashed. Right. Uh, but the, uh, the mortgage market was still pretty good here, so I got my mortgage broker's license and then I did that, you know, for a couple of years. But then I was so miserable, I remember telling a friend of mine, I said, you know, I was just going to work. I was just, you just kind of going through the motions of life. It was one of those, I hate Mondays people. Right, okay. You know, and uh, I just said, I, I, I don't know, like, I got to find something to do, like, to, to take my mind off of this. And then, uh, I, you know, I saw uh, Exit to the Gift Shop, and, and um, I wasn't so much inspired by the artist, but I was inspired by someone who had just... Uh, you know, he didn't do art. He just he, he he fell in love with it, and he just he gave his one hundred percent. Yeah. And he made it happen. So, 
I said, you know what? I, I'm going to get a canvas tomorrow. And I, had, and I was not, uh, I'm going to get a canvas and I wanted to be some huge famous artist like the guy on, in the movie and uh, I'm going to make money. And well, it was nothing to do with that. I just said, oh, I'd love to do it again. I hadn't done it in a long time. So I remember the first canvas I bought was actually huge. It was uh, six feet by five feet tall. So I just naturally wanted to do something big. And uh, I thought I was going to paint originally, but I remember coming home from work one night, and I was, you know, it was kind of late, and I was, I think the arts, the curries might have been closing, and I couldn't get any paints. But then I had like lots of magazines and newspapers, and I just started playing around doing a little bit of collage. But then I remembered all the things that I learned with stained glass and like different techniques, and I just sort of created my own thing. But I was having fun doing it. Uh, and then before I knew it, I was so happy. I was going to work. I wasn't focusing on my regular job, and I was still doing my job. But I was, was you know, the, the focus was yeah. somewhere else. I was drawing things at work. I was excited to go home, and I, you know, created a few pieces of artwork. And uh, uh, one of the restaurants that I had worked in while I was in school, uh, we became friends. And he he saw my artwork and he asked if he could hang it in his restaurant. And I said. Yeah, I said, but I was kind of reluctant. Uh, he wanted to take all of them. I said, well, just take one, you know, and we'll see what people think. I said, but, you know, don't sell it. I'm joking around. I said, yeah. you know, they'd have to pay a lot of money. Yeah. If, uh, you know, I was just a joke. I didn't think anybody sure. wanted to buy it. Right. And then uh, he called me a few days later, and he said, um, yeah, I sold your picture. <laughs> and I said, why? And he goes, well, they gave me 14000 for it. Wow. I swear. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Yeah, and then uh, so right there it was, uh, you know, that moment of, you know, growing up as a kid, I don't know, I grew up in a different time. I, but, you know, telling your parents you wanted to be an artist was, sure. you know, it wasn't, not that my parents pushed not to do the stuff like that, but it was more of the, uh, you know, you were a lawyer, a doctor, or you, you know, started a business or learned a trade. Uh, being an artist wasn't something where you could live. But your mom was artistic. My mom was artistic, so it was never something where they said, don't be an artist. Right. But it was just, I don't know, maybe it was just a different time where, you know. Sure. Maybe it was more me that thought, you know, it's not something possible. Right. So it was that moment where I thought, okay, you know, this is something that's possible for me to do. So and it was not even, it was nothing to do with the money. The money is great. But. I guess they just wanted you to have more of a stable career. Something that was. Yeah, a stable career. But it, for me, it was more, okay, well, now I can actually, you know, sustain a life sure. doing artwork. So and That you're passionate about. And that, is that you wake that up love. every day and you. Yeah, you and I don't hate Mondays yeah. anymore. Yeah. It doesn't matter what yeah. day is it. And um, yeah, I just uh, I literally called my boss at the mortgage office and I said, I don't think I'm coming to work anymore. Yeah. She said, okay, you know, do your thing. Yeah, that's when I met you. Uh, I can't remember where and when we met, but it was probably six, seven years ago yeah. at one of our events, probably. Yeah. And yeah, you were a mortgage, mortgage broker, Mort like yeah. suit tie guy. Yeah. And that's why I remember when you told me you're doing art now or you're holding an exhibit, I'm like, really? Because I, I didn't know <laughs> that side of you, yeah, right? Yeah. And uh, obviously, you've, you've grown. It's been, it. uh, I think it's coming on five years now. Okay. And it's. Uh, yeah, it's been really cool. You know, it was very uh, unexpected, but uh, you know, I work more now yeah. than I ever worked. But it doesn't and feel like work. No, I retired yeah. the day I started doing yeah. art work. Do you ever find that you're in a zone, and when you're working on a piece, you lose track of time, and all of a sudden you look at your watch, like, holy shit, it's four in the morning. Oh, it's it's not even that. Well, I, I when I start my day, I usually do it from. Well, I mean, that's the nice thing of working at home. I work when I wake up, and yeah. then I go to bed and it's, yeah. yeah, and I'm still working, but that's every day. Yeah. The part that I lose track on time is, you know, when my mom calls me and says, you haven't, <laughs> you haven't called in like two weeks. Oh, wow. And I think I spoke to her, okay. you know, I lose track of time in that sense, yeah. right? You know, the days go by and I go, oh, yeah. wow. And, and now that I look at your work again, I could totally see the influence of your mom's stained glass well, that's what I wanted Creative. it to look like. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, it definitely has that look and feel. So, um, you know, looking at your artwork, they are so complex and so intricate. I mean, how, how does an idea in your head materialize into a piece? Because there are thousands of images that you cut by hand mm -hmm. to create that. So, Well, what I do is I find... Um uh, not only people, but different subjects or, you know, different things that inspire me, you know, throughout my life or something that I've just experienced or experienced in the past. And then I, I, I think of, uh, 
you know, materials that might relate to that subject. Um, so, so I source them out and I, I do research on, on the things that I'm you know, passionate about or, or that subject that I'm working on. So once I get all the materials together, but then you know, doing that as well, I have to think of uh, the color scheme. So I have to think, okay, if I want to make the background this color, what materials are in that color that relate to this subject? Right. Right, so that's that becomes a little bit more difficult, but it's exciting. It's a little bit of a hunt for me. Then once I do that, I, uh, I just you know I, I rip the paper and I carve all the black lines out with paper and I do it all. Uh, I build it all sort of like a sculpture. I just put it all together. Yeah, layer over layer. Layer after layer. It's a lot of layering, and then and it, you know they're all on on wood, and I do them on wood because uh, it holds the background a little right. bit stronger when you do the resin, so it looks like glass. But okay. Yeah, it's it's a lot of research and a lot of uh, you know hunting and, and different ideas. But it, and, and you're self-taught with this. Did you have any mentors? Did you have anybody who kind of coached you through the process? Uh, no, to, to, no. To create this, this was um, listen. What they look like now? The, my first ones didn't look right. like that. My first ones were good, but they were not uh, as refined as they are now. But I mean, just like any art, um, you know, it's you, a process. You, you learn from the mistakes. Right. You know, it's it's. Uh, a lot of trial and error, and actually a lot of parts that I added to my artwork now were mistakes. Okay. Like I had made a, made a mistake with my artwork, and then I had tried something to fix it, and that that experience yeah. ended up, you know, coming out with yielding a really good result. So, you know, that's all it is. Sometimes yeah. uh, you learn from your mistakes and end up coming out better, right? Sure. So, uh, totally. I mean, that's how it all. It all that's, with, that's with anything, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So when you picked up the phone that day to call your boss. And you knew, okay, this is the day. Yeah. I'm quitting. What were you feeling? Were you scared? Were you excited? Were well, you... I was excited making yeah. the call. Right. So I got, I said, you know what? I'm going to call my boss and I'm going to quit. And I, and, I, and I called her and then I quit. And then I hung up the phone and I go, I can't believe I just did this. <laughs> yeah, it was literally right away. And I thought, I, I was panicking. Like, yeah. okay, that paycheck's not coming anymore. Right. And, you know, what are you gonna, maybe these people were nuts. Yeah. Maybe it was a one-off. <laughs> And then, and then it was, uh, uh, I think, a week or like a little bit more than a week, almost two weeks later, um, a few more collectors would call me and bought the rest of what I had. Wow. Yeah. So it was, uh, then I said, okay. But, I mean, listen, e even, even five years later, I still, you still, uh, I mean, just like any business, you, you always just want to make things better and, and keep creating. Sure. So there's always... Uh, I don't believe in staying staying stagnant. You always yeah. want to like create better artwork. So there's always that stress that I cause myself because you know the, every the, piece has to be better. Than it the has to be head, better. Sure. And how, how do I make it better? Yeah. And it's a process of yeah. evolution and growth. And yeah. Yeah. I, I try not to even look at other artists' artwork anymore because sure. then I start analyzing yeah. mine. You know, becomes yeah. a whole yeah. fight with my own brain, yeah. you know? And, uh, so I just literally, I, you know, a lot of people will ask me about different artists, and I just say, you know, I have, I have friends that are artists, and I love their artwork. Uh, and, but as far as me, you know, like searching through other people's artworks for ideas, I, I try not to do that at all, because I find uh, your artwork becomes more authentic and original when you're not so focused on other people. Sure. There, are, there are artists that have influenced um, influence like uh, artists that I love I love their work and their style does my artwork look anything like theirs I don't know I don't think so but who are some of the artists that you really like well, I mean, um, it's it's not so much just their artwork but it's also what they've done for the sure. artwork like okay. Picasso has created you know I think it was six different styles and he's actually one of the creators of collage who's two okay. people and um uh, yeah, so what he's done for the art world is, is, you know, pretty outstanding. Even Andy Warhol, do I love his artwork per se? I'm not. Uh, I I, lo I like his artwork, but I think the 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 way that what he did at the time with his artwork was outstanding because there was no artwork sure. like that. But how do you feel about Elite Daily calling you the next Andy Warhol? It's nice. It's 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 amazing. It's just kind of uh, big shoes to fill. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, it's listen. It's great because Andy Warhol was so successful, and he was uh, obviously you know years after his death, he's still celebrated a lot, and you know he's considered one of the known artists sure. of our time. 
So is it? Uh, it's, it's something. It's it's inspiring for me because you know it gives me more drive to. Okay, well, if you're going to be yeah. called that person, then you should work hard enough to become yeah. someone that remembers you after you're dead. Okay. You just got back from Paris and Geneva. Yeah. Uh, did you see anything during that trip, or do any of your trips to other countries and cultures inspire you? Always. It's um, you, it, it's not even just uh, visually inspiring. I mean, just meeting different people and seeing how they live is uh, inspiring for me because you know not only do i use subject but i, I tell stories through my artwork sure so yeah it's definitely inspiring it's a it's a wake-up call too because when you go to countries that you, you'll go to some countries where there everyone's got money and there's no money issues like switzerland or geneva like right the, the, everyone seems to have money there and then you go to other countries that really you know put things into perspective when you go and people are struggling to find food and eat yeah and those are the trips i find i like the most because it makes you uh, appreciate what you have yeah. and, and try and to just like yourself help. as well. I mean, your personal journey, you yeah. were down and out for quite a few years. Mm. And then, thankfully, you got your life together. Yeah. Did a job that was getting you by. Right. And now you're doing something you wake up and you love doing every yeah. day. And, yeah. uh, I mean, it's got to be an amazing feeling to know that you were in control of your career. You work when you want. You produce what you want, and, and now I'm sure you can pretty much charge what you want. Yeah. Um, over the last five years, what have been some of the highlights of your artistic uh, career? Mm. As far as highlight, well, I mean, uh, like, uh, well, I mean, not that I get starstruck, but it's nice when you, you know you find like a celebrity or sports players and and stuff like that buy your stuff because it just. Um, not that it helps give you credibility, but it helps. Um, nice you know, we grow. It, it's not. It's nice to be nice. acknowledged by someone mm -hmm. uh, I probably would have never met. Right. So it's nice to meet um, people that you may see sure. on TV or read in a book yeah. that inspire you as well. Yeah. And uh, it's probably someone you would have never met before. And so it has nothing to do with them being a star. It's just someone inspiring that you you know you'd like to meet and you get to meet them. So I think those highlights for me are are, are the nicest part. And yeah. who are some of the people that, when you got the phone call, you're like, really? This person wants to buy my stuff? Yeah. Right. So there was like uh, Marcus Stroman and uh, Jose Batista, uh, Arlene Dickinson, uh, Mike Wackerly. Um, the owner of the New York Yankees, wow. uh, the owner of the Marlins, uh, the CEO of Gap. Uh, That's amazing. It's, I don't know, there's lots. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's it's very cool. They're they're just uh, uh, they're they're all really great, inspiring people. And the the thing I like about a lot of them a lot of them as well is they do charities. And yeah. Like Jose Batista's sure. charity, I donated to, and, and Children's Aid as well, because I believe in giving back to programs that help, um, you know, help children out. Absolutely. And, uh, because, you know, not, not everyone's in a great situation. Mm -hmm. and sometimes people need a little bit of a boost. Yeah. And, and if that money gives them a boost, then maybe uh, that person you're helping out could change the world for a positive way. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, not everybody has the courage or the ability to leave their stable job and pursue their dream and make a, a major transition mm. in their life to walk away from what they're doing because they have to do it yeah. to doing what they want to do because they love to do it. So what advice would you give someone who is looking to make a change, who is not happy with their life and wants to pursue what they really love but they're just too scared to do it? You just have to have the balls to do it. Yeah. That's all it is. You just have to have the courage to do it. Right. There's there's people every day that have a dream of doing something, but yeah. they just don't do it because they're scared. And it's not to say that I wasn't scared. You're terrified. But you just do it. Right. Because you only have one life. So, I mean, uh, what's the worst that happens? You fail. People are afraid of failure. Right. Don't be afraid of failure. You just have to do it. And if you fail, yeah. go back to your old job. And try something different. Failures are necessary. Failure. I've had failures in my career along the way, and I have to tell you, I learned more from my failures yeah. 
than I did from some of my successes because right. the funny thing is with success, when things are going well, nobody ever says, okay, hold on, stop. Why is everything going well so, so well right now? Like, yeah, why, yeah. why is this working? You know, when things are going well, you're just riding that high, things yeah. are going great. Y you, you really only stop to take a hard, hard look at everything when they all fail. of a sudden checks start bouncing, yeah. you know, can't come up with rent, yeah. you know. Then you want to take a look at all the numbers. You want to look at every expense, and then you're trying to understand what went wrong, what yeah, happened. Yeah, you want to take a step back. Okay, wait yeah. a second, what are we doing wrong here? Exactly, and, yeah. and in those lessons you learn, you hope that you've paid the price and you're not going to make those mistakes yeah, exactly. before. Yeah, Yeah, you learn that lesson. When you open your next business, you're going to go, Okay, these are the things we're not yeah. going to do. These are the things we have to focus on. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I mean, failure is necessary. Have to fail. And it's better to have tried and failed than to not do it. And then yeah. many yeah. years later, you're taking your last breath and you think to yourself, well, No, what if? Nobody. Should have done it. What if? Yeah, yeah, no, I don't do what if. Yeah, if you don't try, you don't know. Yeah. You know? It's just yeah. like if you don't ask, you don't get. Right. Yeah. Right? Even if it seems ridiculous, just ask it. Who cares? Right. You know, someone yeah. could say yes. If they say no, then they say no. Yeah, and you got to visualize it. Yeah, you got to yeah. believe it. You got to write it down. Everything I've imagined has come true. Yeah. You know, but it's not that. It's not to say that someone could just sit there and imagine stuff. Sure. You have to put the work in too. Sure. Well, it's yeah. one thing to have an idea or vision. It's another yeah. thing to take action. I think that's where sometimes people get held up in their. Yeah. They they kind of hold themselves back for their own reasons. Right? I think everybody's has a talent to do something. It doesn't have to be artistic. It could be anything. But the two, things, the two things that are important is, one, discovering what that talent is, because sometimes it's not so evident, like, yeah. I'm good at basketball, I played basketball. Sometimes you don't know what you're, yeah. you're really good at, but it's just trying different things yeah. and discovering it, and then doing it until you discover what that thing is, and then giving it 100%. But a lot of people uh, you know, don't try different things because they're scared, right. so that's the one thing. Yeah. And then the other thing is, maybe they know what their talent is and what they're really good at, they just don't have the courage to, okay, I'm gonna give it 100%, right, so. I'm a big believer that your secret talent and superpowers lays outside of your comfort zone. Yeah. It's when you push past your boundaries that you discover, wow. Totally. Like for me with photography, I was 35 years old when I picked up photography. I didn't know I could be a good photographer. Yeah. And it's going to change now. my life now, you know? Yeah, yeah, now you love it. You want to quit everything oh and just God. take pictures. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Kind of what, why we're here today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, that's not, no, and that's great. And it's, it's nice to, you know, see you so passionate yeah. about something as well and, and follow it because, uh, you know, maybe this, this is what you're probably meant to do. Yeah. So it doesn't matter what, what age you are and when you discover something you should do. I mean, look, Colonel Sanders started KFC when it's a stupid example, but yeah. he's 75 years old yeah. when he opened it. For sure. All right? So maybe that was a dream of his, but... He and he failed at life yeah. 20 times before that moment, right? Yeah, so true. resilience and determination. You just Mona Lisa, yourself. example. Yeah. She was... Yeah. Uh, uh, he painted it three times. Oh, wow, and really? It took him 20 years. I didn't know that. Holy 20 wow. years he worked on it. Wow. Yeah. It's great. We're getting a little art lesson here today, too. Yeah. That's good, yeah. <laughs> Um, so it's been an amazing five years, and yeah. you know you're you're going like this. It's awesome. Where where do you see yourself in ten years? What what is uh, what do you visualize for your future? Where do you want to be? Well, I tell you what I hope. I hope uh, you know within ten years, I hope I would be in a museum. Mm -hmm. um, hope I'm alive still. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I just hope to uh, you know keep the success that I have, and uh, you know keep inspiring other people, but. Most of all, I hope I'm still doing artwork and I hope to uh, leave something behind when I'm gone, like a Picasso or an Andy Warhol. Um, you know, not, not that he just, you know, he was a good artist, but maybe, you know, leaving behind a footprint of, you know, uh, not only the style of artwork, but, you know, what I've done in, those, in, in my lifespan as sure. an artist for other people and for the art world. Yeah. Yeah. And, and an artistic legacy is probably what every artist yeah. dreams of and works towards, so. Yeah, of course, I think everybody wants to leave that uh, blueprint behind. Absolutely, well you've got many, many years left to create more <laughs> Yeah, I got a couple so more years, I'm yeah. sure it'll happen if you want it to. Yeah. Um, you touched on arts for children and education. Mm. How important do you think art programs are for children in the education system? I, I think it's so important, and uh, the sad thing is a lot of schools are cutting out art.
you know, like they say, the creative adult is the, the child that never died. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you're exploring a different part of your brain. Absolutely. Like, uh, I, I, I took those courses in finance and all that sort of stuff, and did I, I, I understood it. I did well. I, did, I passed the courses. But for me, to read those books was torture. Mm -hmm. I hated it. I hated it. And for someone who, like, you know, may have uh, read something in an hour and understood it, it would take me three hours. Right. But I really wanted to do it, and I was dedicated, and I, and I did it, right? So I don't think, um, I think I'm good at that stuff, but my brain is more of a creative brain as well. Mm -hmm. So if you don't allow the child to explore that part of their mind or creativity, without creativity, nobody would invent anything either. Exactly. Exactly. So you have to expand art and all this sort of stuff because maybe they're not going to be an artist, but I think you know growing the creative side of your brain. You know that's why we have creative advertisers sure. and we have like uh, people invent stuff, the, the shape of something or like a product, new technology, new technology. New I mean, fashion, we, we don't grow without yeah. creativity. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So it's everything. Fashion. Exactly. So it, it, I think creativity is in every career. Yeah. But if if you're not doing artwork. Yeah. You're not growing that part of your brain. So yeah. you just become what? Nothing. Nothing. Everything will just stay the same. Right. So and yeah, that's why so. I'm obviously a part of Artbound and yeah. you know, very excited that you're now going to be a part yeah, of Artbound as well. Yeah. And uh, providing resources, arts materials, teachers, classrooms for young mm. children to learn art, yeah. uh, I think is needed more now than ever before because the mm. reality is in the next 10 to 20 years, half the jobs that exist will be obsolete. Yeah. The jobs of the future, we haven't even thought of yet. Yeah. So we need creative people. the younger generation <laughs> to be more creative than we are now because mm -hmm. the jobs of the future, the technology of the future, will need to be created by the next generation. Mm -hmm. And without those creative thinkers, <laughs> who knows well, they, what we uh, stuck. the future, the economy, you know, we need disruptive ideas. Yeah, you need really people to think outside the box. Track. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I think art, that's what art does, it makes you think outside the box. Yeah. If you stay with uh, the blinders on, you just walk straight, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would, be, uh, it would be awesome to have you join us in Haiti this year. And, when is it? And uh, I believe it's gonna happen in fall, fall of 2017, we're gonna be uh, <laughs> taking our trip to Haiti, supporting the Free the Children there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it would be amazing to see you make a collaboration with the children there. Yeah. Yeah, that would be a, an awesome moment Maybe sure. we could make it with uh, like a collage out of some of the materials that are just there in the jungle. Yeah. That would be cool. Yeah, it's definitely a project I think we should collaborate on. And, yeah, that would uh, be cool. And try to make a reality. Yeah, I'd like that. Yeah, yeah. Like you said, it's about inspiring the children. It's about mm. inspiring your friends. I mean, I know a lot of friends and fans of yours are going to watch this interview and oh, yeah. they're, they, they may question themselves, am I really happy? Am I doing what yeah, I exactly, love? Yeah, exactly, yeah. So, you know, yeah. thank you for sharing your story and thank you for, uh, for being open and honest and, yeah, uh, you know, love your work, keep creating, keep visualizing. I have a beautiful piece of they your do, work yeah. in That's my house. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, so thanks, man. I really appreciate yeah, it. Thanks for coming. Thanks for sharing your story. And uh, yeah, man, very proud and happy for you. Right. You deserve it all. Thanks, man. All right.